Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Ezekiel chapter 21. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Ezekiel 21 and verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward the holy places, and prophesy against, and prophesy against the land of Israel, and say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee. I am against thee, and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Oh boy, here it comes. Well, you know what? It looks a lot like uh, Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Yep, the goats are always on the left. They're, the, they're always called the left. You know, oh, look, uh, you're a right winger. I'm a, he's a left winger. Yeah, God's going to do some separating, just like the wheat and the tares, the weeds. God's going to separate. God is the one that separates. And will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Verse 4. Seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath, sheath against all flesh, from the south to the north. Now remember, the north was Israel, and then to the south was Jerusalem and Judah. Verse 5. That all flesh may know that I, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath, it shall not return any more. Sigh, therefore, <sighs> thou son of man, with the breaking of thy loins, and with bitterness sigh before their eyes. And it shall be when they shall, uh, when they say unto thee, Wherefore sighest thou, that thou shalt answer? For the tidings, because it cometh, and every heart will melt, and all hands shall be feeble, and every spirit shall faint, and all knees shall be weak as water. Behold, it cometh, and shall be brought to pass, saith the Lord God. Verse 8, Ezekiel 21, 8. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. Isn't that funny? Sword and Lord, L-O-R-D, and sword, a weapon, rhyme, don't they? Oh, yeah. The sword of the Lord. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. Uh, wow. I just saw something. Do you know that slaughter is laughter with an S on the front? I just noticed that. I just noticed that. You take laughter and put an S in front of it, and you got slaughter. Wow. Oh, let's see. Verse 10. It is sharpened 
to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Uh, you know, nice shiny sword, right? Should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. As he hath given it to be furbished, that it may be handled, this sword is sharpened, and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people, not the heathen, the Lord's people, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon my thigh. Because it is a trial. And what if the sword contemn even the rod? It shall be no more, saith the Lord God. And that word contemn, C-O-N-T-E-M-N, -E is a verb. It's Latin. It means to despise or to drive away. To despise, to consider and treat as mean and despicable, to scorn. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned? Uh, that's in Psalms 15.4. This is Webster's 18.28, by the way. To slight, to neglect as unworthy to regard, to reject with disdain. Uh, therefore do the wicked contemn God, Psalms 10.13. They contemn the counsel of the Most High, Psalms 107 and verse 11. You know, the more I take a look at uh, Webster's 18.28, the more I have nothing but respect for that man and all the over 20 languages that he knew fluently. How would you like to be able to go to Europe and no matter what country you were in, you can converse with them? Didn't matter. Italy, Spain, Germany, France. He, he was <laughs> he was on it. Guy guy was a scholar, a linguist. Not just, you know, linguist is a language scholar. Because it is a trial, and what if the sword contemned even the rod? It shall be no more, saith the Lord God. Verse 14, Thou therefore, son of man, prophesy and smite thine hands together. And let the sword be doubled the third time, the sword of the slain. It is the sword of the great man that are slain, which entereth into their privy chambers. You know, their private chambers, you know, like a bedroom, right? I have set the point of the sword against all their gates and their heart may faint and their ruins be multiplied. Ah, it is made bright. It is wrapped up for the slaughter. Go thee one way or another, either on the right hand or on the left, whithersoever thy face is set. I will also smite hands together, uh, smite mine hands together, and I will cause my fury to rest, for uh, I will cause my fury to rest. I, the Lord, have said it. Verse 18. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Also thou son of man, appoint thee two ways, that the sword of the king of Babylon may come. Both twain shall come forth out of one land, and choose thou a place. Choose it at the head of the way to the city. Appoint a way that the sword may come to Raboth of the Ammonites, and to Jerusalem, and to, I'm sorry, and to Judah in Jerusalem, the defensed. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way, at the head of the two ways, to use divination, he might make his arrows bright. He consulted with images. 
he looked in the liver. Now, what does it mean his arrows were bright? Well, if you've got metal-tipped arrows, let's say steel, and they get rusty, they're, you know, they're brownish-red, right? Or reddish-brown. So how would you make them bright? You scrape the rust off. And you're not just scraping the rust off, you're sharpening the arrowheads. You're making them sharp so that when you hit something, it goes deep, deeper. He consulted with images. Uh, the images of the false gods. What about he looked in the liver? Well, that is an old uh, soothsayer thing. You know, just like... Uh, the wizards and witches, they would read tea leaves, but they would kill an animal and then they would look at the liver. And depending upon which way the lines went and how the liver looked, they would get an omen. It was basically witchcraft. Instead of consulting with the Lord, instead of looking to the Lord, they looked to the liver. Verse 22. At his right hand was the divination for Jerusalem. What is divination? Well, it comes from a root word divine, but it has reference to witchcraft. Not the divine of the Lord, but the false gods or fallen angels. And it's magic and witchcraft. At his right hand was the divination for Jerusalem to appoint captains, to open the mouth in the slaughter, to lift up the voice with shouting, to appoint battering rams against the gates, to cast them out, and to build a fort. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight to them that have sworn oaths. But he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken." Whose iniquity? Jerusalem. Verse 24. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered, and that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings, your sins, your sins do appear, because I say that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand. And thou, profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end. You ever heard that expression, your day is come? Oh yeah. Right from the Bible, people. A lot of sayings come from the Bible. Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem and take off the crown this shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. And I covered this in a previous uh, Ezekiel. The diadem has reference to do with royalty. Taking off the crown, which means you're not going to be a king anymore. And those that are low in the sight of their own sight shall be brought up. They'll be exalted. And those that are high in their own eyes, they're going to be brought down, abased. Verse 27. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it to him. And thou, son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, concerning the Ammonites, and concerning their reproach, even say thou, the sword, the sword is drawn, for the slaughter it is furbished, to consume because of the glittering. Oh yeah, nice, shiny, sharp sword. They scraped all that rust off of it. It's sharper, sharper than a razor blade, huh? Verse 29. Whiles they see vanity unto thee, whiles they divine a lie, 
divine a lie, using witchcraft for a lie. Whiles they divine a lie unto thee, to bring thee upon the necks of them that are slain of the wicked, whose day is come, when their iniquity shall have an end. Shall I cause it to return into his sheath? The sword, that is. You know, you're going to put the sword back in the sheath? I will judge thee in the place where thou wast created, in the land of thy nativity. You know, native. Your home. Verse 31. And I will pour out mine indignation upon thee. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. And I will pour out mine indignation upon thee. I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath. And deliver thee into the hand of brutish men. And skillful to destroy. These are highly trained and skillful soldiers that know how to kill. Verse 32. Thou shalt be fuel for the fire. Thy blood shall be in the midst of the land. Thou shalt be no more remembered. For I, the Lord, have spoken it. And that is the end of Ezekiel 21. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.